Hello, this is Echo 3, and let's go to the Mun. Let's start by building a pretty simple lander. This thing is capable of landing on the Mun and returning all the way back to Kerbin. Now, for this rocket, I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to be using a New Glenn style launch system. So I've placed the lander in the payload bay of the upper stage. The upper stage of the New Glenn is designed to use the Hydrolox engine, the BE-3. For my version of the rocket, I've decided to use the hydrogen-powered Swerve engine. The first stage of the New Glenn rocket is designed to run on Methalox, which is great to try and copy because most of the engines in Kerbal Space Program 2 also run on Methalox. And Blue Origin, with their New Glenn, like SpaceX, is attempting to make the first stage reusable. The new Glenn is being designed to use a new engine called the BE-4 for its first stage. There isn't anything quite like it in the game. At first, I try using the mainsail engine, but it doesn't work out quite well for me, so I will end up switching that out here in the design process. If the first stage was going to be expendable, this engine would work fine, but for being reusable, my fuel budget was too tight. I will end up adding more fuel, but that will necessitate a bigger engine, so I'll switch these engines out for the Mammoth 2s. Landing legs add quite a bit of mass. Maybe there's a better system someone could use where they would try catching the rocket instead of trying to land it. In the stock game, there is nothing like the grid fins that SpaceX uses, but there are control surfaces which is something very similar to the way Blue Origin intends to control its rocket. In the original Kerbal Space Program, I did make a very similar system using control surfaces like this to control my rocket as it descended back through the atmosphere so I could land it. The New Glenn also has some large fins near the base of the rocket. I found this design to work very well as it helped keep the rocket stable during the ascent stage. I'm really enjoying the game decision to add procedural wings. Now, I just wish they'd add more procedural parts like fuel tanks. That would seem like it could be a good idea to help keep the part count low and improve game performance. Now, I end up adding more fuel, which necessitates using the bigger engines, but this gives the craft enough margin to land the first stage back on Kerbin. I don't end up really liking the way that this looks, but I have to use 5 meter parts and the new Glen is 7 meters wide. Maybe if I had access to bigger diameter tanks or procedural parts, I could make this look a little bit better and closer to the new Glen. And with that, let's try taking this thing out to the pad and seeing if it works. I am playing on the latest version of the game, which at this point is 0.1.2, and I am playing completely stock. The rocket ends up wobbling quite a bit, if only there was something like auto struts that I could use to help keep the craft a little bit more rigid and stable. In the original Kerbal Space Program, I have managed to land my first stage booster back at the Space Center. However, this gets really difficult without mods. In the original game, there were three mods that made landing back at the Space Center a lot easier. I would use Physics Range Extender, which meant that my craft wouldn't despawn in the atmosphere. I would use Trajectories to help calculate exactly where my craft would land as it traveled through the atmosphere. And I would use Kerbal Engineer, and specifically with it, it had a suicide burn counter, which helped me calculate exactly when I needed to burn my engines to save fuel to land. I had to get the whole rocket high enough, otherwise my first stage would despawn if it stayed in the atmosphere when I decoupled. So this was rather tricky trying to switch back and forth between the first and second stage. Ideally I would have decoupled earlier and then had enough fuel to send this thing back to the space center. As is, I have just enough fuel to keep this thing from smashing itself all apart but not enough to actually direct exactly where I want to go, so we're going to end up landing in the ocean. Perhaps as more mods become available, recovering your first stage booster will be easier. And I have no idea what was going on with the water physics there. That was really weird.
I'm going to make a maneuver and circularize the second stage's orbit around Kerbin. And once the craft then is in a stable orbit, I will plot a maneuver to take it out to the Mun. In the original game, the developers have really fine-tuned the maneuver editor, and I really like that. This sequel game isn't quite there yet, but hopefully it will get those features in the future. But a feature here in the sequel game that is really nice is that the sphere of influence is visible. The game is still very much in early access. However, with this last update, it is a whole lot more playable. And they have done quite a bit to improve performance as well. I am playing the game in 4K and it is running quite well for me. When the game first came out, I dropped my resolution down to 1080 and the performance still wasn't that great. My favorite thing in the original game is the career mode and all of the mods that I had access to. KSB2 is still just a sandbox game, but that's really all the original game was as well when it first came out. So I think KSP2 can get there and will be as good or hopefully better than the original. Now I'm setting up my retrograde burn so that I will get into orbit around the Mun. This was a little inconvenient because I couldn't select my orbital path here going by the Mun. Nonetheless, was still able to set up my maneuver node and now can burn to get this craft into low orbit around the Mun. It was at this point that I noticed that Bill is in the craft and not Jebediah, whom is the one I selected in the VAB. I don't know exactly when Bill snuck in the craft and switched places with Jebediah, but there does seem to be some issue when you revert your craft back to the vehicle assembly building that it may change the crew when you launch again. My orbit around the Mun is inclined, but if I land right near the equator, I will be able to get back into orbit around the Mun in a non-inclined orbit. The craft has an excessive amount of Delta V. I probably could have taken this thing to Duna and back. But the goal of this mission was mostly to see if I could recover my first stage booster. Which I've determined is really hard. It took quite a few attempts just to land my booster back in the water. Most of my issues were with the game engine and how it would despawn whichever section I wasn't using if it was still in the atmosphere. But at least it is possible to recover your first stage booster. And now Bill is going to attempt to safely land his craft on the surface of the mine. This area should be pretty flat, so hopefully Bill doesn't have too many issues. He's certainly not Jebediah or Val when it comes to flying. And it's times like this where I am reminded how much I miss Kerbal Engineer and its suicide burn timer. But this is very similar to my first experience with the original game before I started going crazy with mods on it. Hopefully Bill can not tip his craft over. Maybe he can knock it back up with his jetpack. That doesn't seem to be working. Let's just plant a flag and figure this out later. Fortunately, Kerbal crafts have very strong reaction wheels. I think if Bill gets in here, we can use those reaction wheels to get this craft upright and get this guy back to Kerbin. Just retract the landing gear, pop this thing upright, put the landing gear back out. Now, we're going to launch about 90 degrees towards the horizon and send this craft back to Kerbin. Looking at the craft's trajectory I don't even need to worry about circularizing. I'm just going to keep burning prograde, and that should take this craft all the way back to an encounter with Kerbin. I'll just keep an eye on my flight path and quit burning when my periapsis gets inside of the atmosphere. And there we go. Bill is headed home. As far as my personal life goes, things are really busy because we've just started planting season on the farm. And very unexpectedly, I'm going to be farming even more land this spring than I anticipated. But hopefully I can still work some time in to make some Kerbal videos. I do have more videos planned for my series on the original four. And I have received some requests to expand that series to include other Kerbal knots like Didi Kerbin 
and perhaps I'll even expand things to include some of the new Kerbals added in the sequel game here, like Tim C. Kerman. If you have any recommendations for future content, please leave a comment for me. I do read all the comments and try to reply to as many as I can. I am Echo3, and thanks for joining me on this discussion about the new Glen Rocket. I will see you next time.